we have in the project strong arguments for the continuing relevance of national museums. And this is due to the many negotiations and conflicts that are being uh, fought behind the scenes in museums. They have a long trajectory and they are not a mishap. They are part of the functioning of, of, of the museum. And creating uh, the va a value of the institution in making them relevant cultural forces and arenas for negotiating conflicts and differences. And they have play, been at play over the last two and a half centuries. The ideas behind the creation of national museums develop slowly out of the practice of representing, ordering, exploring the world by making collections and displaying them. I was at the University Museum this morning and that's an excellent example of early practices in, in, in that area. A higher appreciation of the materiality of being and of values as a road to knowledge and prosperity uh, <coughs> challenged earlier religious and idealistic ideas of the futility of matter. The shockwave of the French Revolution and the Napoleonic contest moved valuables across the continent. And though countries were later liberated from occupation, the need to represent themselves as nations to strengthen the will of the subjects to defend their unity and sovereignty with arms, but also with pride, identification, community building, and economic activity of a national dimension not seen before, enhanced the role of national museums. The creation of these institutions was one of the prestigious means of processing the urge of, for knowledge, education, and grandeur not only through representing an existing world, but by their establishment, presenting and creating new ideals and communities for the future, begging for a future. Europe has since then seen industrialism, colonialism, two world wars, the Cold War, the fall of the Soviet empire, migrations, globalizations, and environmental threats, while at the same time growing to tremendous affluence and prosperity. Articulating consensus and handling tensions created by history and these changes is part of the cultural infrastructure of contemporary Europe and the world where national museums play a role acting as benchmark on where the standing on these issues are allowed and needed to be located, used, contained. National museums are authoritative spaces for the display and negotiation of community and citizenship. Not, any, not everyone can set up uh, a national museum. It has to be accepted, be regarded as legitimate. They have the, uh, for us, they have the scientific advantage for a comparative exploration of being there over time and in some sense or the other in all nation states, although shaped differently in interesting ways. Through collecting and creating repositories of scientific, historic, and aesthetic objects, choices are made that protect and narrate ideas of virtues, uniqueness, and place in the wider world. The first negotiation made by any museum is pointing to an object and arguing that it represents a unique or typical value worth preservation. From this follows the authoritative and sometimes contested decision of what type of reality or value the object does represent. Is it the natural world, outstanding art, a craft tradition, an historic event of our own culture, or a foreign culture? The struggles of indigenous people to make the representation of their cultures travel from natural history museums to other departments of the museum as a model of the world are part of that negotiation. This shows one of the dimensions where knowledge and politics do interact explicitly. A political community in the making is in need of scientific support for its ancientity, its coherence and qualities over time. Through the museums, the quality and unity of the culture is composed to an orchestration of unity in diversity as we know it from the European Union today. But that 
sentence could be used as a label for most um, manage of difference in most national museums. This involves tuning down political controversies, domesticating differences in favor of the aesthetic pleasure of high art or the admiration and presentation of class and regional difference as a cultural asset, not a political difference in need for change. This has been done in rural open-air museums like Skansen in Sweden and in the ethnographic collections of museums like Museo Nazionale della Arti e Tra Tradizioni e Popolari in Ur in Rome. As part of the stability and beautiful variation harbored in the culture of an allegedly stable and even naturalized national community. New immigrants are either added or kept out of this inclusionary move corresponding to policies outside the museum itself. The museum answers explicitly or quietly by interplaying voice and silences in dealing with old conflicts. The dissolution of the Swedish Empire in 1809 and 1905 was celebrated in early 21st century. Dissolutions were, uh, uh, were celebrated, not victories of imperial Sweden in 1658. That was passed qu quietly. Classical Rome and the Risorgimento is played around uh, uh, is played around us, while the struggle against the Vatican or the fascist period is dealt with through silences in the most prestigious arenas. The role of the nation vis-a-vis -vis its neighbors as part of Europe, a Western tradition and the world community is communicated with a mixture of silence and voice. Being placed in the historical museum is an ambivalent honor. It shows respect, but at the same time it states you are not part of the future and not even an active part of the present. What part of the economy is currently ready to be next in line for ending up at a historical museum? And what parts points towards the future? The question is not always answered post facto, but established as an argument for where to place hopes and investments, real investments, economic investments, not only uh, uh, attitudes uh, to move towards the future. Utilizing national museums in competition between nations and metropolis as investments in the experience economy is a contemporary factor adding to the older objectives of securing heritage. Another example of a will to change or adjust to changing political balances uh, in a post-colonial environment where new economic superpowers enter the arena concerns the frequent conflicts about the restitution of objects and human remains to old colonies. The narrative of these issues treat questions of historical change in many ways. The European Union is troubled by disputes in many dimensions about democratic deficit, migration, territorial expansion, integration and weak performances on many in many dimensions. A free market, as well as ideas of universal human rights, are in fact localized, embedded and negotiated in institutions like cultural museums too. A growing attention to cultural policy as a necessary political dimension to pursue political goals is feeding into the seventh framework program for research, which ask, asks for policy relevant knowledge 